This is the practice test for Chapter 9. Remember, we only did three sections that we are testing you on and that will be on the final exam, even if we cover more material from Chapter 5. So in number one, one of the things we're going to ask you to do on the test is to plot points in polar coordinates. Remember, if it makes you feel better, change radians to degrees. So pi over 4 you change to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel, and 180 divided by 4 is 45. So first you find 45 degrees, which is here. But a radius of negative 3 means that you go in the opposite direction, three circles out. And as long as you give some scale, let's see, I think I see where 3 is. It looks like it's about here. I guess this particular graph was scaled. So there's point A. Point B, which is at negative 60 degrees, negative 5. So first, negative 60 degrees is this way. It's going to be here. Oops, that's a bad line. There it is. This is where negative 60 degrees is. But since the radius is negative, you're going to go off in the other direction and graph the dot on the fifth circle out. Remember, if the radius is not negative, you don't go the other direction. So if instead this said positive 3 pi over 4, you would have plotted it here. Number 2, name the point in four different ways. And there's no point there, so I will give you a point. Um, let's make one up. All right, let's figure out where that green splotch is. So... One way of doing this is to use the scaling on this graph here. And it looks like it's at 240 degrees, and it's on the circle labeled 7. So 7, 240 degrees is one way of labeling this. But what if I don't go in the positive angle direction? What if I go in the negative angle direction? What angle would this be at? it would be at negative 120. So 7, negative 120 is another way of labeling it. But another way, the other two ways of labeling this point is by giving it a negative radius. Remember, if it has a negative radius, then it must actually have an angle up here, and then the negative radius would plot it in the other direction. So what angle am I at? Positive? I'm at 60 degrees. What angle would that be if I went in the negative direction? Well, it would be at negative 300. So that's four different ways of plotting the same dot, which is at 7, 240 degrees. Number three, find the distance between these two points, 250 degrees and 11, 100 degrees. It turned out that the distance formula was actually the law of cosines. If you know these two radiuses, radii, I guess I would call them, and we'll call this theta 1 and theta 2, then the distance between the two points is radius 1 squared plus radius 2 squared minus 2 times radius 1 times radius 2 times the cosine of the angle between them. And then you square root that answer. So the distance between these two points is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 2 times 11. The cosine of 100 minus 50 is 50. Now, I would suggest putting these in parentheses, too, because if the radius is negative and you don't put it in parentheses, you will get the wrong answer. And the distance between them will be about 9.83 units, whatever the units of measurement are. In number four, we talked about solving systems of polar equations. When we did systems of equations in rectangular coordinates, we learned how to solve by graphing, by substitution, by elimination, and by using matrices. 
for solving systems of polar equations, we're either going to use substitution or we're going to use graphing. I'm going to do this by hand. The way that it works is you plug one of the equations into the other for r. So I get 5 theta minus 2 is equal to 3 theta minus 1. Theta is the variable, so think about this in terms of your Algebra 1 knowledge. You'd subtract 3 theta, so you'd have 2 theta minus 2 is equal to negative 1, and then you would add 2, and you get 2 theta is equal to 1, and then theta is equal to 1 half. I don't know if that's in degrees. It must be in degrees because it says it's in degrees. I don't particularly like that problem, so I'm going to give one that's a little more complex. So this is extra. It's not on your paper. R equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. R equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. And I'm going to do this by hand, by substituting this into the other equation in place of R. So I get 2 plus 2 cosine theta equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. So the first thing that I would do is I would get rid of these two. They just go away. And I'm left with 2 cosine theta is equal to negative 2 cosine theta. And then I would get my cosine theta on the same side. So I would add 2 cosine theta to this side. But that leaves me with 0 on the right. These are like terms, so they combine. Dividing by 4 just yields me with cosine theta is equal to 0. And so theta is the inverse cosine of 0. But if you do that in your calculator, the only answer that it's going to give you is 90 degrees, which is the positive x-axis, sorry, y-axis. But it turns out that there's another location where the inverse cosine is 0, and it's on the negative y-axis which is at 270 degrees. Now, if you want to do this in your calculator, make sure you're in polar mode, make sure you're in degree mode, and that under your table set, which is second window, start your table, so table start at zero, and make your delta table 15. And if you use the table to find the solutions, you're looking for where your radius values are the same. Now, I have to, do, I have to go back, because although theta is equal to 1 half, that doesn't tell me what r is. And I forgot that the solution to a system of equations is the order pair where the two graphs intersect. So in problem number 4 here, I still need to find out what r is. So if theta is 1 half, I'm going to find out that r is 0.5. So the ordered pair where the two graphs intersect is at 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. For this problem down here, the two places are at 90 and 270. It doesn't matter which equation I plug into. How about I plug into the first one? So 2 plus 2 cosine theta. So I need to find out what is r when theta is 90. Well, cosine of 90 is 0. And 2 times 0 is 0. So r is 2. Oh, that's not moving up anymore. So 2 comma 90 degrees is one of the solutions. And then the other one is when I plug in 270. But the cosine of 270 is 0. And 2 times 0 is 0, but plus 2 is 2. So the other order pair is at 2 comma 270. So don't forget like I did to go and make sure you know what R is as well. The solution to a system of polar equations are the ordered pairs where the graphs intersect. If I ask you to sketch a graph of a polar equation, I do expect that you're going to put it in your graphing calculator, but I want you to utilize the table to give me a fairly accurate graph. So if you graph R equals 3 minus 2 cosine theta, 
using the settings that I gave you on the previous slide. I always got, I'm just going to go from 0 to, to 360. So the first order pair I see is at 0, 1. Well, 0, 1 is here, that little blue dot. And then I have some decimals, but one of them is 60, 60 degrees is 2. So at 60 degrees, I put a radius of 2. And then I see that at 90 degrees, the radius is 3. And then let's see, the next one is at 120 degrees, it's at 4. And then at 180 degrees, it's 5. And so I already see the graph is doing this. And then, let's see, at 240, it's 4 again, so it's going back down. So 240 is 4. It looks really bad. Let's make this more curvy. There we go. At 270, it's 3. At 300, it's 2. And then at 360, we're back at 1. So if you graph this on your calculator, you should see something that looks similar to this. In order to graph number 6, remember it says r squared. So we're going to square root both sides. So we're going to graph r is equal to the, neg to the square root of negative 2 cosine 2 theta. So I'm going to plug that in my calculator. And when you go to the table, you'll notice that there's no value at 0, 15, 30 degrees because they're all errors. The first point is at 45 degrees 0. Well, that means it starts at the origin or the pole. And the next one is 60 degrees, it's at 1. And then it's 70, or let's not go to 90 degrees, it's like 1.4, so it's a little bit more than that. I have a hard, hard time making these little splotches on here. And then you'll notice at 120, it's back at 1. And then when you get to 135, you're back at 0, so you basically see this little loop here. And then you have a bunch of errors again. And then at 225, it's at 0, but at 240, it's at 1. And then it's like a 1.4 at 270, and then at 320, it's back at 1, and then it comes back down again. And that's a terrible looking drawing. It's going to look better when you do this on the test in pencil. Down to number 7. Write the polar coordinates in rectangular form. The definitions are, for rectangular coordinates, x is r cosine theta. So we're going to do negative 4 times the cosine of 50. And y is r sine theta. So we're going to do negative 4 times the sine of 50. And then I'm going to shove them in my calculator. And I'm going to get x to be about negative 2.57. And y is going to be negative 3.06. So the ordered pair negative 2.57 comma negative 3.06 is in the same location as negative 450 degrees would be on the coordinate on the polar coordinate plane. Now think about this for a minute. Where's 50 degrees? 50 degrees is about here somewhere. But to graph negative 4, you would go four circles back this way. That means your answer should be in quadrant 3. On the rectangular coordinate plane in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. So I feel as if I've probably done this problem correctly. Last two problems. Number 8, find the polar coordinates for the rectangular coordinates 5, negative 13. So we found out that finding r was really just the Pythagorean theorem. But theta, you have to be careful. Theta is the inverse tangent of y over x if x is positive. But it's the inverse tangent of y over x plus pi, which is 180, if x is negative. Well, x is positive in this case, so we're going to use this one. So r is going to be the square root of 5 squared 
plus negative 13 squared. Notice I put it in parentheses because you better get positive 169. And so I'm going to get 194, and the square root of 194 is about 13.9. And then for theta, we're going to do the inverse tangent of negative 13 over 5. So the inverse tangent of negative 13 over 5 is going to give me negative 60, I guess about negative 69 degrees. So the polar coordinate is 13.9 comma negative 69 degrees. Ask yourself if that makes sense. This point is in quadrant 4. So would this point that we got in polar coordinates also be in quadrant 4? Well, where's negative 69 degrees? Be down here somewhere, and then 13.9 circles out would leave you in quadrant 4. So this is probably the right answer. The last thing we talked about was writing polar equations in rectangular form and rectangular equations in polar form. To write a rectangular equation like r equals 6 sine theta in rectangular form, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by r. The reason we're going to do that is because we can replace r squared with x squared plus y squared, and r sine theta is the same as y. And once you get rid of all your r's and thetas, you've got your equation. You don't have to do any more work, and that is what is on the chapter 9 test. It's going to be very short because we didn't cover a lot of material on this particular section.